The kingdom of God is moving mightily, reaching the lost in multitudes all over the world. In partnering with this ministry, you will be part to equip, empower and commissioning sons and daughters moving in the power of Jesus Christ into the world by demonstrating the kingdom of God. Together we can do it. Sowing into the kingdom of God has been made easy. Visit our website www.identitychurch.cosa and partner now. You can do it via EFT with the full Woeing banking details showing on your screen or you can use any of these other options like Zapper or PayPal. With your seed we are changing destinies together. Welcome to Identity Church. in the evening call upon the name of Jesus and be saved there's power in the name of Jesus you can receive healing in the name of Jesus Jesus drives fear away Jesus is the bread of life Jesus is water when you are hungry I believe you will change the Bible says where the word of God comes things can't stay the same Things have got to change. May you change and may you change the city. May you change and may you change this province. May you change and may you change this nation. You see, it's time that we spend less time on the pulpit and more time in the prayer closet. It is time that we spend more time on our knees than trying to be on the platforms. It is time that we spend more time in prayer and speak to the living God to call upon revival to hit this nation. Thank you, Pastor Sydney and your wife for the invitation. Thank you for the management of this church. It's a great honor and a privilege. When Jacob wrestled with God, he said the following words, I will not let you go until you bless me. Can we make that our prayer tonight? Lord, we, we won't let you go until you bless us tonight. This is not just a Pentecostal service because we don't have anything else to do this is a divine appointment traveling here while i was sitting in load shedding traffic i was i was praying in my car and i said god let heaven come down and touch earth tonight he was ons is will the here you vanavond ontmoet hy wil iets vir jou doen en ek wil hy moet gou vanavond iets saam met my sê sê vir jou bier man dit gaan vanavond anders wees it's going to be different. Jy het al ke expectasie hoe dit gaan wees. God is going to do it different tonight. Amen. I want you to open your Bibles. The book of Genesis. Chapter 39. If you haven't read your Bible in a while, Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Chapter 39 is just after chapter 38. And we're going to read verse 1 through to 4. My theme tonight is, God never stops working. Sometimes we feel like He's quiet. I don't feel God. He's not moving in my life. God never stops working. He's busy now behind the scenes doing something for His children. Thank you for the musicians and the praise and worship singers you really blessed us genesis chapter 39 verse 1 says and joseph was brought down to egypt and potiphar an officer of pharaoh captain of the god and an egyptian 
bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which has brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And he served him, and he made him an overseer over his house, and all that he had put into his hands. So far the word of God. Thank you, Pastor Chris. God never stops working. I have an expectation. I've learned over the years, been in the ministry, that God meets our expectation. So what is your expectation tonight? Did you come here just to see what the other people are doing? I hope that the end of this service that God will touch every person in this place. I hope that the Holy Spirit will touch you, pick you up from your circumstances, put your feet on the rock, and that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I believe that God is going to renew our faith tonight and that your passion has been reignited tonight. So, as Afrikaners, we like to have a bright place. What do you use to make fire? What do you ignite the charcoal with? Blitz fire lighters. So, down ons gemeente het ons a paar fire lighters. Oh, hier is jylle ook Newlands, welkom. Ek sien jylle nie as raak nie. Hier sit van ons fire lighters. So, I know what the problem is. Sometimes people are shy in church. But if you sit next to a fire lighter, and they start jumping and start praising the Lord, it's only a matter of minutes when you start doing the same thing. And then the person next to you is doing the same thing, because we need in every row tonight, we just need two or three fire lighters to ignite this building tonight. So are you going to be the fire lighter, or are you going to be the one looking onto it? The Bible says, that God works in our lives for His glory. This, this, this must be read again. God works in our lives for His glory. Not for your glory, for His glory. And in life sometimes God comes and He starts pruning on us. You know why God is doing that? He's preparing you for something. Sometimes... Life pushes up left, right. Sometimes life pushes you in a direction that you don't understand. And you ask the question, why is God allowing this to happen? God is preparing you for something different. Something bigger. We must never give up as children of God. We are vessels full of the glory of God. We are His children. And not long from now, God is going to call us home to reign forever with him and everything we're going through now is preparation for our reigning when times get tougher and more difficult and it's not going to become easier it's going to get tougher we are being prepared and nobody is overlooked in this building tonight god has got a plan for every life Amen. philippians 1 verse 6 says the following that he that started the good work in me will complete it on the day of jesus christ Amen. Die Heere gaan jou nie net los nie. Hy stap saam met jou tot aan die einde. He started the good work, he's going to complete it. So many times we ask, Pastor, why does this thing happen in my life? I don't understand. This is not supposed to happen to me. Why is something happening in our church? It's not supposed to happen. God is preparing you for something greater. Ek wil hier met dit glo vanavond. God is besig om jou op te sit. He's setting you up for something greater. So I've read the book of Genesis chapter 9. Let's have a look at the life of a man named Joseph. Joseph was a young man who had strange dreams. Joseph was also a talker. In, in your family there's always that one person that talks so much. Yes, that one you're thinking about now, that one. 
And Joseph was talking to everybody and to his brothers about the strange dreams that he had. And the Bible says his brothers got jealous of him. It teaches me that we must not tell our dreams to everybody. Don't share your future plans with everybody. It's dangerous to do that. And the brothers, his own blood brothers, said to each other, We don't like him. Let's kill him and get rid of him. Your brother wants to kill you sometimes. Your brother is not always your brother like you think they are. And the one said, I have a better plan. Let's throw him in a well. They threw him in the well. They came up with this plan because his father loved him. They took his clothes, put it in some blood of an animal. And they lied to the father and said, a wild animal came and it killed your son. While Joseph was in the well, the Bible said that human traffickers came along. They bought him. His own brother sold him. They tied his hands, put him at the back of a camel and dragged him through the desert. While he was dragged by a camel, I'm sure he was looking back, shouting, please don't do this to me. I love you. I am your brother. But they felt nothing for him because they were jealous and they sold him to somebody else. The Bible says he came to the house of Potiphar, a rich man. He became his slave. And after all this that happened to him, the Bible makes the following declaration. And God was with Joseph. Sometimes in life everything goes wrong. It feels like you are in a washing machine. Sometimes you're on top, sometimes you're at the bottom. Sometimes you're on the left hand side, sometimes you're on the right hand side. But I'm here to tell you that God is still with you. He won't forget you. Joseph had favor in his life. Do you know that no plan of the enemy can change the favor of God? No person, no human person can stand in the way of God has put his favor on your favor on your life. When God puts favor on you, nobody can stop him. He is an unstoppable force. And then with his favor, with God being with him, came the lie from Potiphar's wife. Joseph was not in a good place. He had to deal with the lies. Sometimes we are not in a good place. Sometimes people lie about us. Sometimes they are jealous of us. And Joseph gets thrown into prison. And the Bible says when he was in prison, he was talking to God and the, and the following statement is made that Joseph did nothing wrong but he was in prison we go to church we did nothing wrong we treat other people with respect we are honest we tithe and still it feels like we are being thrown into prison life has got no mercy for us life has got no mercy for you but I've got good news for you tonight. As the Lord was with Joseph, he will be with this church tonight. As the Lord was with Moses, he will be with this church tonight. Sometimes it feels like you are being dragged behind the camel with your hands tied. The Lord's favor is still upon your life. Don't look too much into what is happening around you. Don't look too much what's happening in South Africa, all around the world. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. He is the one that's going to take us to the end. He's the one that sees you when you are crying. He's the one that sees you when you are pleading for grace, when nobody else is around. And sometimes it feels like God is not responding. Sometimes it feels He's not hearing us. He's not answering us. But I can tell you tonight, right now, God is working on the next chapter of your life. I want you to remember this. God is working on the next chapter of your life. So the day comes 
when Joseph's next chapter in his life arrived. The Bible says the one night King Pharaoh had a dream. And he wanted to know what the meaning of this dream is. And all his advisors was called together and they could not interpret the dream of the king. But somebody heard of somebody in prison who can interpret dreams. And he raised his hand and said, I know of somebody in prison. And the Bible says they went to Joseph. They bathed him, they clothed him, they shaved him, they took him to the king. And after all the long time of suffering, after all the lies, after his own brother sold him out, finally the day came when Joseph realized his purpose. He stood in front of the king and he told the king what his dream meant. Not long after that, he found himself in the palace. Not as somebody working, but living in the palace with the king, second in charge of the whole of Egypt. God's time is not our time. God has got a set time for everything. And it may feel like we have this long season of, of being in the wilderness, being in the well, being in prison. But while we go through this stuff, as we are tonight, God never stops working. Ek is so blij die Heere hou nie op werk nie. Terwijl ons hier staan, is hy bezig achter die skerms. And God decided he wants to teach Joseph something. And the next part is very, very important. Joseph had all the reasons in the world to be bitter for what his family did to him, his own brothers. He had all the reason in the world to bear unforgiveness. But God gave Joseph two sons. The first son, the eldest, name was Manasseh. Say to your neighbor, his name was Manasseh. Manasseh means, listen to this, the Lord made me forget my past and those who hurt me. God is busy working with Joseph. Every time his eldest son Manasseh walks past him, Joseph thinks of this, God has made me forget my past and those who hurt me. And then God gave him a second son. His name was Ephraim. Ephraim means God has blessed me and made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. I can feel the presence of God. God wants you to forget the past and forgive those who have hurt you. If you can do that, He will bless you and make you fruitful in the land of your affliction. See, you must understand that God knows what He does, and He knows everyone of us. And so, what Joseph has known. En geweet het hoe moet om te werk, weet hy om vanavond met jou te werk. Want hier binnenkant gaan goed aan wat ons mee deel, en ons wees dit nie van ander mense nie, maar omdat ons mense steek ons dit weg. Maar die Heere wil vanavond iets vir hierdie plek doen. Hy wil hy ons moet vry spreek, so dat jy kan vrug dra in die land wat jy benadeel was. Listen to this, in the land that you were afflicted. Hy sê nie, jy moet na ander land toe vlug nie. Hy sê nie, gaan soek groener weivelde aan die ander. God wants you to be fruitful in the land that you were afflicted, Pastor. Your fruit tonight is here. And I know sometimes it's difficult to see the hand of God when you are in a well. It's difficult to see the hand of God when you are in prison. It's difficult to see the hand of God when you are treated as a slave. When lies are being told about you. It's difficult to see the hand of God when they bear false witness about you. You cannot see the hand of God. But there's coming a day when the light will break through and the hand of God starts moving. Like he did in the life of Joseph. 
then you will see that God makes you forget the past and those that hurt you and that you will see that God can make you fruitful in the land of your affliction. Psalm 105 says the following about the man Joseph. It says that Joseph's feet was put in blocks and the word tested him. You must go read it. We are being tested every day with all kinds of circumstances. Sometimes it feels like we are stuck in blocks. It feels we can't move, we can't go nowhere. But our time is coming. The stuff that we preach, we will be tested according to that. The stuff that you say, you will be tested according to your words. Keep on believing. Keep on praying. Keep on prophesying to yourself. You can prophesy to yourself. Last night in my church, I made a declaration, declaration and, I, and I said the following. Every day of this week, I'm going to tell myself that God is busy working behind the scenes. And that that I pray for, which I cannot see now, by faith, God is working behind the scenes. If I can make that declaration for myself every day for the next week, I believe the prophecy will come true. Because behind the scenes, God is working. So pastor, why don't I hear the voice of God anymore? I've learned something in ministry. The Bible says you are the clay. He is the potter. And he takes this clay and he puts it on this wheel and it spins around and he's busy forming us. Your life are being formed and changed and modified as we speak. And the clay does not talk back to the potter. The potter speaks to the clay. Sometimes we have to keep quiet and by faith just say, here I am, Lord. Doen met my wat jy wil. Ek is die klei en jy is die pottebakker. Kom vorm my en maak my net soos jy wil. Remember when Jesus taught us to pray? He said, before you say amen, you have to say the following words. Not my will, but your will. So dis wat die klei moet doen. Hy moet sê, jyre, ek gaan nie klaar as jy my wil opbreek, of die stokkies of die klippies wil uithaal nie. Nie my wil nie. Maar evil, because God knows the future. He knows the best. He knows what we need. And the clay does not talk back to the potter. So I want to make this statement. After many years in ministry, I've learned the following. God wants you to die so he can live through you. Less of you and more of God. Yeah. So I've also learned that success is not always what people in the world see let me tell you what success is success is not a big church with thousands of people success is not a church with millions of rands in the bank success is the pastor with a smaller church after COVID, many people walked away from the church finances have dropped others have walked away in rebellion Success is the pastor that has fallen into the well. Success is the pastor when they tell lies about him. Success is the pastor when he feels he's in prison. Success, success is the pastor that goes into his room and closes the door and speaks to God and pray about the hurt inside that he's experiencing and come back on a Sunday speaking to his congregation while he's hurting inside. That is success. <laughs> success is when you keep on going when they tell lies about you. The local church is a big importance to God. This church is important to God. Identity church is important to God. And tonight, I want to celebrate the faithful pastor of a small church that keeps the kingdom of God going. I can tell you tonight, 
It's not easy when you hurt inside to stand in front of people and serve them. Die lewe gee vir jou houwe, jy kry merke, jou hart bloei, jy deel moet goed by jou eie huis. Weet jy hoe voel het vir een pastoor as mense wegstap van hom af? Dis soos een echtscheiding. Hoor wat ek vanavond vir jou sê. It's not easy. And I celebrate the faithful pastor that stands in front of this congregation. The one that shed tears at his home. In his room where nobody saw that. The one that's crying himself to sleep every night. And still comes back. And be the shepherd of the herd that God gave him. That is success. I want to tell you about an aeroplane. They say the following about an aeroplane. Resistance gives us lift. Kan jy dit gauw vir jou dit bierman sê? Resistance gives us lift. This is the principle by which every airplane flies. When he gathers speed and the resistance is enough under the wings, it lifts up the plane. Each one of us has a Potiphar, a Mrs. Potiphar, somewhere in your life. Ons allemaal het dit geëxperience. Wat doen jy as jy in die spaar loop? En daar kom hy ou wat van jou geskinner het nie jou so seer gemaakt het. Moet ek vir jou sê wat doen jy? Jy spring achter die Coca-Cola ijskas in. Want jy wil hom nie sien nie. Want dit maak seer nie so nie. Think about that one person that hurt you more than anybody else in your life. Hy een aan wat jy nou dink. Hoe voel jy wanneer jy die persoon raak loop in die straat? What do you do when you meet them face to face in the shopping center? If you still feel hurt, as jy nog steeds wil wegkryp achter die ijskas, dan beteken dit die volgende. Jy het nog nie onvoorwaardelik vergewe nie. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I have people like that in my life. And I I tell you tonight, I'm telling my wife and other people, I will love them from a distance. <laughs> ek is lief vir julle, ek het julle vergewe. Maar bly julle aan, ek kan nie doorring draad, julle gaan nie saam met my braai nie, julle gaan nie saam met my thee drink nie, because you hurt me. I, I'm teaching you something tonight, you can forgive people, and not allow them back into your life. Want die duivel is baie slimmer as ons. En partij mense kom maar net terug met die mes wat achter die rug weggesteek is. As jy nie kan ophou dink aan dit wat met jou gebeur het nie, is die kanse groot, jy het nog nie heeltemal vergewe nie, en jy still have work to do. Look at Joseph, look at his forgiveness towards his brothers. I'm almost done. Science and medical doctors points out the following. Listen to this interesting facts. If you carry offense against somebody, it has a negative impact on your body, on your organs. If you carry unforgiveness, it's got a negative impact on your body. It's got a negative impact on your cardiovascular system. It's got a negative impact on your nerve system. You get high blood pressure, rapid heartbeat, muscle spasms. But when you forgive, the opposite effect will happen to your body. Listen to this. You will have healthy relationships. You will have healthy spiritual health. No anxiety. Low blood pressure. No depression stronger immune system and a healthy heart when you forgive as jy moet bitterheid rondloop is jou lichaam nie gezond nie jy weet jy kan bitter wees of jy kan bitter wees daar is maar net mense wat ons nie like nie listen to what Paul says Paul says Lewe in vrede met almal, so ver dit moendlik is. 
Some people will not agree to peace. Just forgive them in your heart and you go your separate ways. I want to end with this. There was a prophet in the Bible called Isaiah. Isaiah was one of the biggest prophets in the Old Testament. One time he prayed and the rain stopped for three years. That's how powerful this man's prayer was. God supplied all his physical needs. He prophesied to a jar of oil and the oil never stopped coming. He prophesied to a jar, a jar of flour and it never stopped coming. He prayed to heaven. Fire came down from heaven and 850 Baal prophets died. Hier was a machtige profeet. Hy het oorwinning op oorwinning op oorwinning gehad. His biggest victory was on Mount Carmel when fire came down from heaven and he proved to Israel that God is the God that should be served. And after he killed the prophets, those people made a declaration and said, your God is the one that we're going to follow. After his greatest, greatest victory, the king of that country named Ahab had a wife called Jezebel. Jezebel was the king of that country, not her husband. She was manipulating her husband. A woman die nacht vir my gesê, niemand sit op my kop nie, dis my vrou se plek. That's what happened to Ahab. His wife was sitting on his head. She was, listen to what the Bible says. He was the worst king Israel ever had. Because he brought idolatry into the kingdom. Guess who persuaded him to bring idolatry into the kingdom? His wife. Look at your wife. Look at your wife and tell her I love you. Moet ek het sê, wat ek julle daar binnen vertel het. Ek was in die moeilikheid. Moet ek het los? Oké, okay, ons is levendig, kom ons los het. So Jezebel, after her prophets were killed, she got the news, she sent a message to this prophet saying, that before the sun sets tonight, I am going to kill you. And you know what this mighty warrior, victorious prophet did? He started running. After all the victories, he got one thread and he started running. He ran for a whole day without stopping. Hy sou die Comrades Marathon lach lach gewen het. A whole day. And the Bible says that evening when the sun went down, he was so tired he just collapsed. And I rock in his slab. He was tired. He didn't want to live anymore. The king's wife said, I'm going to kill you. My army is behind you. He's just tired. Have you ever, ever felt so tired that your tired is tired? Amen. And he slept in the desert. The following morning he woke up and the angel of God was standing next to him. While he was sleeping, the angel prepared breakfast for him. Fars, sasko brood. Gebak, oor a vier, met warm klippe. Go read your Bible. And the angel said to him, eat and drink. If you do not strengthen yourself, listen to this, the road up ahead will be too far for you. As jy nie gaan eet en drink nie, gaan jy nie kracht om aan te gaan tot aan die einde toe nie. He ate and he drank and he fell asleep again. For the second time, the angel woke him up, gave him food and said, as jy nie gaan eet en jou krachte terugkry nie, gaan die pad voor en toe vir jou te lang wees. You know we are, why we have gatherings like this? As jy nie hier kracht kry nie, 
gaan die pad vir jou te lang wees voor hen toe. There are people, there are Christians that say the following, you don't need to go to church when you are a Christian. The Bible says in Hebrews 10.25, you have to go to church. But let's put that scripture aside. If you do not strengthen yourself in the presence of God, you are not going to make it to the end. And after he ate and he drank, he became victorious again. You know what the problem was with this prophet? He had all these victories. And with the first defeat, he sat down and he lost control of his whole life. We do the same thing, we as persons. On South Afrikaners do die You walk past 20 victories, and then you organize a tea party with a one defeat, and you sit and have a party with defeat. How many victories have you and your church have passed in the past? We're not going to stop with one defeat or two defeats. We're going to be, we're going to be like, like the prophet. We stand up, we strengthen ourselves, and then we have enough energy to carry on till the end. Yesterday morning, one of my elders, he wasn't in church. Last night he was in church, so I spoke to him. And he says, no, I went on a bike run this morning. That, that's why I wasn't here. So I said to him, if you have energy to go on a bike run, you can have energy to come to God's house first. How do you strengthen yourself for the next week? How do you renew your, your strength? How do you get hope for the next week if you do not attend church? You want to go to heaven, but you don't want to attend church. You want to go to heaven, but you don't want to live according to the scriptures. You don't want to live a holy life, but you want God to bless you. You want God to heal you, but you don't want to have discipline in your life. You need to spend time in the presence of God. So I want you tonight, in closing, to check yourself. Are you not busy pushing the replay button of the past in your life. Some people dwell on the past. They live in the past. Yesterday is gone. You can only live now in the moment. We are here in the moment now. And I want to encourage you tonight. Take your thoughts captive and lay them at the foot of the cross. Fill your mind with hope for the future. And in closing, I want to tell you this. God wants you to forget the past and those who have hurt you. This is a word in season for this, this specific congregation. And then secondly, God, pastor, wants to bless you and make you fruitful in the land that you were afflicted. So I said, I said in the beginning that tonight is going to be different. Thank you for watching. It has been great to have you with us. Remember to stay connected on all social media platforms. Go and check out our website www.identitychurch.cosa to partner with this ministry and together we can be the change.